Hey, good people. Kind of a unique one here for me. This is the Plex tube echo chamber, and this is uh, the last iteration of the Echo Plex, essentially. Uh, it was designed by Mike Battle, and uh, going back to the late 50s when the Echo Plex came out, and then it was bought by Gibson, I believe, who was the Maestro Echo Plex. This is the Plex. Uh, this was made in about 1999, and it's a tube echo chamber. And I'm going to turn on, I'm speaking into the mic right now. I'm going to turn it on, and we'll see how long it takes for those tubes to warm up. So I'm going to keep speaking into the mic there. I think you heard it. Uh, so, you know, it's a typical couple seconds for the tubes to warm up. This is, uh, let's just start to add uh, some echo to it. This side is the dry signal only. This side is the wet signal only. So, so if we go if all the way, way over, over, we're now, we're now wet, wet only. only. And, then and then it's whatever, whatever mixture, mixture of wet of and wet dry that you want to uh, have, have here, here with this, with this, this, this uh, knob. knob. This obviously this repeats as it says. So, so uh, let's, uh, uh, we'll, we'll keep it here, here for now. For now. Uh, this is uh, how we adjust how our uh, speed of the echo repeat. So, so let's listen let's to listen this. To check. 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 As the speeds increase, the oscillation, it oscillates out much more dramatically. On low, it doesn't seem to oscillate out quite as dramatically. Check. 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 So, 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 this is so our lowest speed setting. Low, setting. Low, and, low, and, and we'll increase the speed a little bit here. Check. 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 So again, this is our wet only, this is our dry only, the amount of repeats and the volume of the echo. So if you don't want a real loud echo, you can turn that down. As you turn this up, the echo volume increases. It's kind of an unusual name for it, record, but uh, I guess it's how loud the recorded echo is. Uh, is one way to interpret that. So I'm going to turn this off and we'll let those tubes cool for just a second and then you can hear how the tubes uh, as they're cooling the signal fades away. So it takes just a moment for that to happen. Shut this amp off. And I'm running through a really cheap uh, Fernandez bass amp right now. So it's, you know, it's not the best sound and it's an iPhone mic. So I apologize. They're pretty low budget vids, people. Uh, let's open this up and I'm going to pull these out, I guess, first. Uh, here's our output just goes to the amplifier. These are foot switch uh, jacks here This is a really simple but ingenious design I think and uh, I'll leave that one in and I'll show you what that does in a second, but let's pull this cover off And we'll take a look at the tape cartridge or the mechanism there Again, this is the first one of these I've ever had and I'm I'm in Japan so I typically uh, gravitate towards Japanese items, but I had a chance to get one of these. I thought, well, I've always been kind of interested in them, being a tube-based uh, unit. So this is how it works. Uh, again, we just slide this tape head over. Faster repeats as the distance between the play and uh, record and play head is shorter. Longer repeats over here. Uh, these cartridges are readily available online. And uh, But this is the interesting uh, situation here with the input. To engage the capstan and the pinch wheel, uh, it's just done with this mechanical lever here, and in order to plug in the unit, uh, put an input in, you just move this over in order to plug that in, and that's what engages the caps into the pinch wheel. So, very simple design, but, uh, you know, it works, works really well, I think. All right, I'm going to unplug this. I have the screws out of this so we can just open this up and show you uh, what's going on inside of it. Now, if I were to keep this, which I'm kind of leaning towards, because I'm really starting to enjoy it. It sounds so good as just a, uh, you know, a preamp with that those warm tubes. But I would wrap this in some black 
uh, felt, I think. Just I, I'm not a fan of looking at foam like this. Um, you know, it's oh, tough to see this right now, I guess. But uh, that's what it looks like without this foam. Now, it's, the foam is there to protect it from jiggling around, which is good. But, again, I just don't like looking at raw foam. So I would wrap that in some, some uh, you know, anything black for that matter. Uh, but whatever, that's not that important. But let's put that back, and I'll just pull the cover off for a second. Typically, when you're using it, you're not going to be staring at that cover, I guess. But uh, like I said, I got this one un uh, bolted, unscrewed, so we can pull this out and show you what's going on inside here. And fairly simple units, really. This one is running uh, three 12AX7 uh, Sovtech tubes in it and an Altran uh, transformer. And then that connects to uh, the circuit board here on the other side. Let's spin that around. And uh, there's a, quite a few adjustments in here, so you can tweak uh, with those trim pots, you know, make adjustments and tweaks to the overall sound of it. Uh, but fairly simple device, but I think captures the feel of the old original units, the look and feel, and certainly sounds fantastic. I mean, it's just got the right amount of tape flutter and uh, I, you know, I'm a big fan of it, to be honest. Well built, um, you know, solid aluminum plates. These are, it's, this is quite thick. And uh, so it seems to be well built. The hinges and everything, the cabinet, uh, carpet lined here. So, so that's it. That's the Plex tube echo chamber. And uh, this, I think, is going to be listed on Reverb. I'm still, like I said, I'm kind of leaning towards holding on to it for a while. I'd like to have a little bit of a collection here. But at some point, uh, if the video's up, it's probably listed. Thanks.